we are on our fifth uh, module for team building, structuring a successful team. Um, the, neat, the neat thing is, is we have a lot of people join us every week that, um, uh, that we're doing the team training that aren't necessarily looking to build a team. Some people want to join a team. Uh, others want to build a team. Others just looking for, uh, you know, the, the information that we're, we're sharing, which is, to be honest with you, the exact same information that comes to uh, individuals looking to develop their good business habits and, and individuals. I mean, essentially, a team is structured by good leadership, good training, good support, good mentorship, and if you're providing um, your typical um, successful agent foundational programs to those other agents, you're, that's what you're doing. You're developing team members, right? So um, when I do coaching, uh, we do coaching on Monday mornings at 10 and, and we put through people through their quick start program and road to Grand Centurion. And, you know, um, it, you know, it doesn't matter. It seems to be what what uh, training session we're in, uh, they typically all have the same foundational components. So when we're talking about successful teams, it's really successful leadership and organization. And if you can get people organized and provide the leadership, they'll be successful. Now, the difference between the brokerage model and a team model, our teams will take 50% of your income as a team member, whereas a brokerage model will take, I don't know, 20%, 10%, you know, and, um, and, and that's the, uh, you know, that's the reality of it is if you follow these good systems, you don't need to be on a team, but some people love teams because it makes them twice as productive, which is worth the 50%, right? So, you know, it really is the, a decision that you need to make at a certain point in time is whether or not, are you somebody that, uh, you know, thrives better in, on a, on a team or a team environment, Hopefully your brokerage, you know, and in our, our case, our brokerage provides that support. So you don't have to give up 50%, right? But, um, you know, uh, if, if you're a really successful team, typically it's because you are able to really develop leads and give those opportunities to the agents on your team that will be less likely to do that business, uh, half of that business or, or more than half that business themselves, Right. So if you're getting more than half of what you would typically do as an agent, then it's worth being on a team because half your money goes to team. Right. So it's kind of have to make that decision. Uh, having a successful team definitely comes down to leadership, building the culture, uh, mentorship um, and good systems. Right. So we'll go through today's um, and let's do a little recap. I mean, we did week one, which is structuring a team. So when you are looking to build out that team model, structuring a team, especially when you're um, doing 50-50 splits. Now, every team is structured differently. Some people, when I first started out, um, I was almost two years into the business, right? And uh, I partnered with somebody and we started structuring our team at 90-10 splits with our team members because we knew that we could provide them some mentorship and some, some direction, but we didn't really have any leads to get them. And they said, no, no, we want to be on a team. We'll, we'll do a split with the brokerage and a split with the team. And we started building that out. As soon as we started developing our own leads, we went to an 85 uh, or an eight, what was it? 75, 25 model. And that 75, 25 model took us into about five years into the business. Then we built a, a, a more successful um, lead systems and uh, we were able to go to a, a 60, 40 split, right? So now 40% of the income went to the, uh, um, went to the team and, and because our value went up, right? So where are you going to structure your team if you're building a team? Well, you have to look at your, your culture, your um, value that you give your team members and decide what's that value worth. And if it's fair, then you'll have a successful um, team that, that won't keep switching over new agents. Um, you should have that culture, mission statement, team structure, and, and, uh, and systems in place, which goes to the next week too, which is our communication systems. We talked about making sure that um, if you are... Uh, you know, developing that culture, you have to communicate your value. You have to hold people accountable. And those systems, uh, right from whether it be your, how you communicate, um, whether by email, cloud-based drive systems, uh, your calendar, um, and, uh, and weekly meetings, daily meetings, uh, weekly recaps, um, you know, all the communication systems that make sure that everyone is on focus. Week three, you know, obviously this is uh, the uh, heart of the team in terms of what people want to derive their value from, at least on the surface, they want to make sure that they get leads. 
right? So your marketing, your profit centers, your CRM, how are you going to drive leads to the team and whether or not that be the team creating their leads themselves through proper management and, and focus, uh, whether or not that be, um, you know, online systems to, to, to give the team members some online leads and, and continuously put people into their database and work with them and hone their skills. So week three was all about that. Um, four and five is, is, is really important because if your team has a really good value to, uh, to client system, so if you're looking dealing with sellers and they go through a really good seller journey, right, um, then they're going to do business with them again. And if you can instill that great service, great system environment, uh, then people will do more business with your team. And that's where the that's where the business comes from, right? The number one team in Ontario, okay, they develop their systems through the complete seller and buyer journeys. It was not online leads. It was not anything that's the flash in the pan. Okay. They come to them because they built out a great marketing system. And when they sold, everything was done full out. Right. So, and that's the way we also ran our team is when a seller worked with us, all these things were in place. So we, we did the seller journey in the last session and the buyer journey in the next session. And by the way, that's where you as an individual agent, regardless of whether or not you're on a team, is able to build out your business. Most people on the, on the surface, when you think about your business, you think, well, where's my next lead or my next sale coming from? Right. And that's important. You do have to market yourself. You have to build relationships and you have to get people to want to use you. But uh, where we drop the ball usually, and the reason why people aren't continuing to do consistent sales every year sometimes is the fact that they sold the house and your people were happy they bought the house, but they're not giving you any referrals. They weren't like singing your praises for the people that are singing praises. Your business now got two and three folds bigger just by one happy super happy client. So we're going to go through the complete buyer journey today and how to instill that onto team members and build out a great program. Um, so what does your buyer roadmap look like, right? Um, and you should write this down. Uh, yours is going to be different than others, but I put together what I see as a good buyer roadmap. It's similar to what, what uh, I had when I had my team. Um, it's also uh, taken from some of the top teams in Ontario, as well as um, Richard Robbins team summit that I attended. And it was a full week of looking at best practices and things that uh, they instill when they do their coaching program. So um, step one, the buyer presentation, somebody calls you and says, I'm looking for a house. Okay. What system are you putting them on? Are you just saying, okay, no problem. I'll go into Stratus and put them into the system and send them prospects. Call me when you see something. Because that's what's typical, right? But that's not above and beyond service, right? So having a dynamic and dynamite online paper copy of the buying process, so you can sit down with them and go through it. Okay, sit with them. Um, when I used to do this, I mean, I it was funny because I did this actually, this whole buyer presentation for a friend of my sister's. And this was, I don't sell anymore. Um, but when people, you know, they know I'm in real estate, and they're looking to buy. I actually went through the same thing with Emily at our um, our new market office or front desk because we help our, um, our our own employees purchase homes as well. So I went through this buyer presentation with hers too. And by the end of those two buyer presentations, now that I've been teaching this so long, I wanted to redevelop my skills. And they were like, I can't believe somebody would not use a real estate agent. They're like, where do I sign right now? Emily was going to say that, right? Her, um, her fiance at the time was impressed. And these friends of my sister, who really I'm not friends with, they were the ones that were like sort of, wow, you know, they were sort of blown away. And I, and I felt good about that. So I'm very confident that the buyer presentation is super important. So how do you instill that onto team members? Um, the showing properties, right? So you're just showing properties, but how do you do it more effectively and go above and beyond? That was one thing that when we started our team back in 2016, 16, no, 2006, um, when we started our team, we uh, both Richard and I, uh, we partnered and uh, we said everything in every process, we have to look at and say, what's good? And then how are we gonna make it amazing, right? So it could be anything from our business cards, right? So what do our business cards look like? If they look like everyone else's, that's just great, that's fine, right? But it's not amazing. 
So we did tent cards and a door opening. And so like it was, we got creative. Our website, how do we do a website that's better than everyone else's, right? So you go through the whole process. So, and that, uh, so we're gonna talk about that and showing properties. The property information package, again, the information um, that you can provide above and beyond what a typical buyer has purchased. So if you call any buyer buy, bought a house in the last year and used a real estate agent, what information were they provided on the house they purchased? And we're going to talk about things that you can give them that no other real estate agent probably gave them, right? Above and beyond service. Number four, offer negotiation. What, I mean, and this is important to the buyers. They want to make sure they're not using just a friend of the family or somebody that they trust to sell them a house, but they want to make sure that you're a good negotiator. Because in the end, the difference obviously in a negotiation could be 20, 30, 50,000. Why are they, why are that, why are you receiving a commission on this property from the seller, right? Um, how did that benefit your buyer? They're, they're thinking about this, right? Jesus, this person just got $40,000 and did eight hours of work. They calculated it, right? What they need to know, they didn't, they didn't, they're not, they're the commission that's being uh, offered to the buying agent, okay? That value of that amount. Okay, is not the time spent, right? We know that. And it's the information and it's the negotiation and it's the amount of value that you gave your buyers. Uh, the firm deal. So when the deal firms up, this is the one step that I always felt a little like there was a hole and you know, you firmed up the deal, congratulations. What do you do after that between firming up and closing? Uh, the pre-closing checkup, right? Before closing, are you calling to check up? What are you doing? Um, and the closing day, of course, with regards to um, the day of closing, the day after closing, uh, weeks, months, years, what are you doing to follow up? If you're putting this roadmap on every buyer and you're making every step of the process amazing, then you will get more referrals, more business. I mean, Brian Buffini says it best. He can, he can make a half a million dollars, no problem on 25 people. So if you have a sphere of influence and you say, yeah, it's not that big, it's only 25 people, that's okay. You just need 10 of them to be A clients that give you two deals every year, right? Now you're at 20 deals a year just from referrals, right? Um, and with the average price of homes these days, 20,000 is going to get you half a million. So not to worry. And every year they give you things because why? Because they help you, they help you build your business. And they do that not just because they like you because they had an amazing experience and they really let everybody know. So the buyer presentation, um, I think most of you uh, probably have been on some of my other uh, presentations and we have the buying presentation on our YouTube channel okay, to go through every slide. But essentially that buyer roadmap we're talking about, most of it actually should be in your buying presentation. The question is, is do you have a good one? Right. So if everyone on the Zoom call right now is to ask you, I want to see a barrier presentation this afternoon at two o'clock. Can you do it? Can you do a presentation? Or are you going to just show up and say, hi, I'm, you know, Jim Smith and I'm here to, you know, uh, sell you a house. You know, I'll put you a prospect list on Stratus and let's get going. You know, is that what you're going to give me in terms of a value? Because if it is, those people are not this, That's when you lose people throughout the buying process. Uh, developing a team buying presentation and saying, I'm going to teach you guys how to properly sit down with somebody, spend an hour, hour and a half showing them how you're going to make sure that you find them the right house, the best house for the best price. Not only that, we're going to support you to make sure there's no legal implications that can arise and go through that whole buying presentation with them. So your team members must go through a consistent everyone does a great buyer presentation. The difference on teams is the team leader, okay, if you have a team, should be the one doing the listing presentations, always, right? You need to make sure that um, as the team leader, and it's your team, that you're the one giving value to your, your agents. So you go in and do the listing presentation to nail it down and get it, right? And you do that because, to be honest, your team members can't do it themselves. Either they can't, uh, they're not able to go in and nail down every listing presentation, or they're not able to de uh, derive enough leads, right? So those are the things that they're looking for you. And 
people will stay on your team specifically because they want the confidence to go in and nail down a buyer a listing presentation. But the buyer presentation, okay, you're going to be handing out leads left, right, and center, hopefully, if you're if you're a team leader. And those buyer presentations can be done by your agents. So make sure you don't just have one, but you teach them how to use it. They need to be printed as well as digital, right? We have both um, variations of the, our buyer presentation we give you guys. So we have a, um, a printed version and a, a um, so you can print it as well as a digital version because they're, the aspect ratios and marketing are different for each. Um, you, you need to be able to hand that over and leave it behind. It's got to be uh, printed in good quality. I know that there are top agents out there currently doing buying presentations still in a three, three ring binder that are printed on their home printer and then they kind of go through it. They're so good and so confident and they've sold so many homes that they, I'll be honest with you, they probably didn't need to bring a buyer present. They probably could sit down and do it face to face no problem without anything, but you're not, um, unless you're selling 50 homes a year, you're not at that point where you can walk in and say, yeah, you know, as a listing presentation for you, yeah, your home's worth this and this, it's because I know everything, right? <laughs> you can't go to a buyer and sit down with them and go, we're going to just, gonna, we're going to buy you a house today. Don't worry. I'm going to look after you. I'm like, oh yeah, this person's a rock star. So you need to convince not only that at the end of the process, you don't need to look them to look back and go, geez, they just made $40,000 off, off of me. <laughs> and they only showed me two homes and it was one night of work, right? You need to show them all the other knowledge and value that you give them, right? Uh, follow up um, with a gift. So on your buyer presentation, this is one I love the best, right? Is when we, we start doing these buyer presentations, they sit down, they go through, they sign up and then you send them a little um, gift. Uh, there's, there's something called Giftogram I used to use, which is just an app on my phone click open the app even if you don't know their address or anything you just you have your you could text them a code to pick up their gift and then it shipped to them and and it's just thank congratulations you can send them baskets you can you can drop off or maybe do a, a gift card you know um so so there's some creative ways there that you can thank them for working with him i really appreciate it. handwritten note really appreciated our conversation thank you so much for entrusting me to help you find a house and then give them you know here's here's a $25 Tim's uh, gift card, you know, for the, for the, for the coffees you'll probably purchase on the, on the showings we do, right. Or something like that. Right. So think of something creative. There's lots of good stuff out there. Um, and make sure, you know, some of the things I, I mentioned there, like setting expectations when you're doing your buying presentation, it really is important that they know the whole process. Right. And to let them know how to contact you, when to contact you. I do see a lot of agents being absolutely pulled in 20 different directions. They're so frustrated was because they didn't set the expectations from the beginning. Have you ever heard of the realtor that's out there? They've showed 20 properties. Um, they're seeing things that, and they're putting offers that are 20,000 below asking when there's 15 offers, right? It's because that they haven't been educated, right? It, you, the reason why buyers are taking advantage of realtors is because one, they think they can, right? Well, in their buying presentation, you tell them you can't, right? Just say, listen, I'm a very busy agent. I work with, you know, 10 other buyers currently, and this is how the process goes. I'm going to be um, seeing all the homes previous to showing you the homes to make sure that they were right for you. So if you ever wonder why I didn't show you a home, ask me, and I'm going to tell you the reason why we didn't uh, put that on our list. And by the way, these ones are the top ones in the area. Uh, I've ranked them in my head knowing that these are the top six right? And knowing which one I think you're going to buy. Well, let's see, you know, and you've ranked them and you've told them ahead of time um, that, you know, after these six, we're going to be looking at garbage because I've already seen the other ones. These are the top six, right? So the only thing that we're going to be able to do is I wait for something else to hit the market, you know, or, you know, instead of them always looking and just pulling you out every week and you're in control, you show them the top six, right? So just setting those expectations throughout that buying conversation. Um, you know, just so you know, I return phone calls seven o'clock every night, right? So if you give me a call and leave me a message, I will be returning at seven o'clock. I had one agent that I used to um, work with and know very well. And he, at the time, did about 400,000 in, in gross commissions. Um, in fact, so that would be 800 or a million dollars now. So he sold a ton of, ton of homes, but he only worked, um, he only worked nine to five, Monday to Friday, didn't work on Sundays. 
he worked on Saturdays from 10 till six or something like that. Um, but on his email, on his voicemail, when you called him, he would say, just so you know, um, uh, I will be responding to your call at 11 o'clock uh, Monday to Friday or at four o'clock. So 11 or four Monday to Friday. So he was so structured that he, people knew that, you know, he checks his voicemails and phones people back 11 o'clock and four o'clock every day. Right. And I'm like, how do you get away with that? I'm not telling you to do that, by the way, because I didn't think that would work for me. But, um, but he's told people, you know, I work Sundays. Just, so you know, it's my family day. So if there was a listing presentation on Sundays, what did he do? Right. Like I always wondered, but he set his expectations and he did a bunch of business and maybe he gave up some. And that was okay with him because he wanted a better quality life doing still in that same amount. But what I will tell you, all his buyers and sellers, they respected his time and they knew when they were going to get back and he followed through and he made sure he did get back to them. So obviously he provided good service. So those presentations, um, you need to instill upon your team members the importance of going through this and practice with them, right? Um, the remarketer. So looking at the, okay, buyer alerts. Yeah. So you've sat down with somebody, you've gone through a presentation, and now you're going to start showing them properties or sending them properties, right? And then, you know, how are you sending those properties? Because all the agents that I know, 90, 95% of them are going on their matrix system, their strata system, and they're setting them up a prospect list, and they're just sending those um, alerts, My, mainly because those systems are more powerful for certain reasons, right? They'll get at something. Um, now, Collaborate has been in the past and Realm for the Toronto Real Estate Board with Stratus is the new system for Collaborate. Those systems are starting to get better. So the real, real time, so something comes up, it, they get it right away. So whereas Stratus doesn't do that, they kind of do that, that search overnight. So you've got to decide what search you're going to use. Now, the remarketer system does send buyer alerts from your remarketer um, platform, so your website. And it's a vow site, so they get sold, they get a better experience. But in order to have buyer seller alerts, okay, market reports, so daily listings, you turn that on and get new, new um, buyer alerts sent out daily. To set that criteria and set that on remarketer, the system we provide, there is the upgrade fee, right? So it's an $80 system. So I'm showing you this because there are, uh, I believe that if I was going to have a team program and instill this in my team, as well as um, moving forward, doing everything just a little different, or a little better, um, I'd be looking at systems such as this in order to start sending those listings out. I get listings alert from remarketer every single day. I set myself up on them. I really like it. That's personally what I like because it does. As soon as I click on that listing, it's got a great format. It looks better than Stratus. I know that. I don't know what Matrix looks like. But when I click on that, it does say search other properties, see sold an area. So you get to, they get to be, and they're engaged in your system, your website, right? Um, the other, yeah, I mean, it's just, a, it's a great, uh, upgrade to just sending it through, um, Stratus. I would suggest you guys start looking at realm if you're on Stratus right now, because realm is a system. It won't show solds. It won't send them souls. It won't be able to search souls. So it won't do what remarketer does, but, um, it is the future of the MLS system. And within a year, by the end of next year, you're going to be switching over Stratus to realm. And there is a better, it does engage your buyers to search on a, your own system. Okay. You got to get them away from other third-party sites because there is opportunities there for other agents to be contacting your people. So if they're using, you know, other third-party sites currently, that's not realtor.ca um, realm or your remarketer site, right? Matrix. If they're not searching and on there looking on your sites, then there is a problem. If you if if you if they are using realtor.ca, just so you know, they can add you as their agent, right? So just you know, teach them on that as well. So I just thought I would uh, kind of go through buyer alerts and what are you sending them and how are you sending them. So so you're out to show the property, and as a team, you want to market yourself as uh, as just the whole process, right? The whole professionalism. So why not develop a team binder? Right, this is something you can put all your uh, your your showing like it's just for buying a house. So you're going to put your um, the address, how you liked it, rated at a ten. Like, you know, I'm going to show you six homes today. Let's write down the cons, the benefits of each one, um, and uh, we'll we'll do a recap at the end. And it's a good way to you know keep track of everything. So brand yourself as the team. This is the team binder. Um, that has everything, including, you know, in some cases, the full listing presentation or 
buying presentation, that sort of stuff, okay? Um, make sure you impress them while you're doing the showings, right? So you're bringing them Tim's, um, you're showing up early, you're turning on the lights, the professionalism that you need your team members to, um, to show homes, this is what you're teaching, right? You're not just teaching people to go out and show homes or you know, say, okay, go show this person a property. No, no, every week at the weekly meeting, you're touching on different service uh, benefits, right? Of, of being a better agent and you need to have good agents. So um, if you're not impressing your clients at the showing with turning on lights, coming prepared, service first, that whole culture and experience, this is where you're building it for the team. You've got to promote good service, right? On your team. Again, top teams in the business are top teams because of stuff like this, right? So now um, they've, you've done the buying presentation, um, you've gone out and you've shown them properties. Now they're interested in one, right? Most people will say, no problem. We'll put together an offer. Um, what would you like to offer? So, well, I don't know what, you know, tell me more about this house. Tell me more about the area. Tell me more about what things are selling for. So put together a package for the top home, right? In GEO, every single house I listed and I sold, whether I knew representing a buyer or a seller, I always pulled a property report for, for the property. And uh, it still has my old address, eh? Anyway, so, uh, the, so you go into Geo Warehouse or you go into Stratus. If you're Matrix, Geo Warehouse is also in there. So, and you, you, you do the full report, right? Um, this is free, right? It gives you all the information about the property, the demographic, demographics of the area, et cetera, et cetera. You don't need to pay, pay for any additional reports there. Uh, the only one I may print and pay for would be a $5 report just on square footage to see what Geo Warehouse or Land Registry has the, the square footage as. It seems to be the only thing that is not given, right? So you have to pay for that. But I would print a Geo Warehouse report. I would print a public records report. I would report, uh, generate a report, whether it be Stratus or Matrix for stole, sold statistics in the top um, mini CMAs, okay? You don't have to go through the full CMA, but you can go through a mini CMA, um, give them an idea of where everything's at, sit down with them. School districts, the new realm system allows you to actually uh, click on the property that's listed and you'll see a map of what school district and what school they go to. So make sure they know that, right? So I print that off. Uh, this is a property package um, that I would provide every single offer I do. Um, obviously strong negotiator. We talked about this with the set that when selling a property um, and you're and putting in your listing presentation, buying presentation, um, you know, I like, you know, being there's the certifications. I actually don't have any, to be honest with you, but I like them, <laughs> right? Um, if I was still selling, I would go out and get a certified negotiation expert. It seems to me, um, there are a lot of people that have like 50 certifications. And if you have too many, it just seems like, okay, you're overeducated, right? <laughs> it's like, yeah, congratulations. You have every certification, but if you have specific ones, it, it sort of draws the eye to the fact that. Uh, no, no, I take, you know, certain things seriously. And one of the things I take seriously is the certified negotiations. I know how to, um, to do a, you go, the big thing they teach you, I think, from a certification on the uh, negotiation side is how to take the other person's personality, know what it is, and, and then deal with it when you're negotiating back and forth based on their personality and how you have to change your personality in order to get them to, you know, take the lower offer or take the higher offer. Now, right now, when it comes to negotiation, it's, it's, there is no negotiating. We, we, we know that. So when you're currently, and, and you're, again, you're on a team, you're the team leader and you're sitting in front of all your team members on a, on a weekly meeting and say, okay, everyone, this, this week, we're going to talk about negotiating a good price for the house. Um, there is no negotiating. If you're putting your offer in, you're just, it's, it's more, how do you win it? How do you win the deal? And there are a ton of great um, opportunities that you can instill uh, when negotiating, you call it negotiating, when putting an offer in on a property to make sure you do get it, right? And um, there's some really good tip, tips with that. You got to teach that, right? You got to teach that to your team members. 
um, because how you prepare the offer from how you write it up um, to how it is presented to what goes along with it um, to also managing the expectations of your buyers and also finding out what your buyers will pay, right? Again, the two questions I always ask when, when putting together an offer for somebody is, is that your best offer? And so the question is, is that your best offer? And tomorrow, will you be upset if it goes for any more than that? Right? That's the first question. And then as soon as they say, no, 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 I won't be upset. You know, that's our best offer. That's fine. One more question. Um, are you, did I push it too far? Are you, are you concerned that you paid too much? Will you be upset with me tomorrow if you actually do get the property? And they said, no, 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 we won't be upset with you. That's our best offer. And we're, we're strong with that. Those are the two questions you ask, right? So you got to teach that, right? You have to make sure that everybody asks those two questions when going into a multiple offer scenario. You'll never lose a client if they're not going to be upset with you because they did their best, right? Moving. So now you've negotiated the deal. You beat out 44 other offer offers these days and uh, you've bought the house and, and you congratulate them and say, okay, no problem. This is not done yet, right? Um, and, and when I was selling, it was done. It was like closing comes, good, thank you, gift, all the rest. This is a, a fantastic program. Um, when I negotiated this deal with the company to provide every single agent in our company move snap, I was super happy to be able to give everybody the value of over $1,200 each a year. Okay, so this program costs twelve hundred dollars a year for an individual agent. Okay, we negotiate it for every single agent in our company. The problem is, is because I provide, we provide as a company at no charge. Some of you don't see the value in it. It's, it's, you know, and I want to make sure that you see the value in it. So, know how the system works by going in and doing the demo. Put yourself on it if you want, and just pretend you're a buyer, and go through all the different features on this program because. As soon as the deal firms up and it, it be, between firming up and going and closing, that's the most, the second most stressful, <laughs> some of the most stressful times in moving, the moving process is like top stresses in life, right? So if you can make that any easier for somebody, they'll see that value. So they need to do a ton of things. And it's not just finding out, you know, and rem remembering to change your address on your, um, you know, your passport and, and all your government ID and change over the electricity and the TV and the internet and everything you see here. But it's other custom tasks is like we need to find a new Montessori school or we need to, you know, um, find a new yoga class in the new city or whatever it is, right? So you, there's a ton of things in there. And it really does um, do all of that. And there's a full concierge with it too. So we've heard stories of people calling the concierge and, and saying, listen, you know, I needed to find X, Y, Z in my new town. And they actually, you know, researched and found that for them on their behalf. So there's, there's great systems here. This, this moving system all across Canada, I think the U.S. as well. If you're moving to BC, it'll tell you who you have to contact for electricity in that town, right? So they've done all the research. So it's a really good moving concierge your service. Again, back to the top team in, the, in, in Ontario, uh, this is what they provide as part of their moving process. I saw, um, actually, my wife pointed it out, uh, one of the top teams in our area sent a flyer um, to us yesterday, and this is literally yesterday, and he went through all the things they helped them do, moving, moving this, that, whatever, calling that, this, whatever. So it's a full, the full moving service. And I'm like, yeah, this is move snap. Oh, really? It's moved it? Yeah. Look at everything on here. Everything on here was, we will help you do this, this, and we'll get you in touch with this, this, and that. like, it's a, it's the full value of this person, this top team. Um, so here it is, here's the platform. And uh, so if you're not using it, I would suggest you do use it. Uh, one of the things good or bad, uh, I don't know whether or not, you know, whether or not it's just, I think it's good um, is that we automate it. Right. So we, we actually invite on your behalf, your clients and do that for you and with your name, right? So if you do do a sale, we will send it to your people. We'll take the sales info sheet you fill in. Um, and so we'll do all that for it. What we won't be able to do is call them and let them know it's coming. So they'll think it's spam. So we won't get as much interaction by the automation. So we do help you, right? So if, you're, if you have a team, what you should be doing is taking this over and saying, no, my team administrator will make sure and call and it's your concierge. So now you're admin, let's say your admin's name's Steve. So Steve calls your client and says, congratulations on, uh, on your uh, sale. I heard it firmed up last night. Aaron just wanted to make sure 
um, that I gave you a call and let you know that he's just sent you a full concierge service. Okay, this is going to help you through maybe moving, uh, doing this, 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 and this. Um, so you're going to see that today. Go ahead and accept it. It's not spam. And, uh, and if you have any questions, give me a call, right? So now, again, concierge service with the team. Okay, a really good service. So on moving day, do you roll out the red carpet? Are you doing things like sending pizza, right? We talked about this in the selling process. It's the same slides. It's the same idea. They moved into the house and uh, this was given by the realtor. Other ideas, pick them up in a limo a week later, take them out for like, I, I like this one because local restaurants need help right now. And they're gonna be at 50% capacity next week. So you'll be able to do this now where you send a, a limo, they, you pick them up, take them to the, your favorite restaurant with the owner, the restaurant knows they're coming. Right, anything they want on the me on the on the um, on the menu. Make sure you give them, you know, the bottle of wine, all that kind of stuff. Take them through a really amazing concierge. Thank you. Right. Yes, it's going to cost you three hundred bucks. No, well, actually, with the limo and everything, it's probably going to cost you eight hundred bucks, maybe a thousand bucks. Right. But do you know how many re referrals you'll get for a thousand dollars spent? And remember, you just made thirty, forty thousand. So a thousand dollars. This is part of your system. This is true concierge, right? This is really impressing people. I've seen people give cash back, if you believe it, um, of $5,000, $10,000. And that person never gave them a referral. They just think, ah, you make too much money. I want, I want your money. I want your cash. Thank you very much for the 10,000. One or two things will happen if you give cash back instead of doing something like this. One, you'll spend a lot more money because $1,000 in the big scheme of things, it's not a lot when you're talking about a $4,000 deal, maybe you've double ended or whatever. So it's not a lot uh, percentage wise of your total, but you'll get two or three more um, referrals because of your service, not because you give the cash back. You give cash back, it costs you more and you get less referrals. And guess the, what? If you do get referrals, guess why you got the referral? Use Aaron because he gave me five thousand back so he'll give you that five thousand back and then they expect it again from you it's not a good business plan there is no team in this land that is in the top producing that gives cash back on buying right they typically top i'm top top teams i know teams of i've seen the ads right i will do this i will do that they they are not in the business very long right either that or they just don't have a great business the teams that have the great business are the ones that do stuff like this right they'll get better clients and they'll be happier. Um, and then what gifts are you giving, right? Now, maybe the limo and all that sort of stuff's a gift. Maybe it's, you know, the limo is an experience. They'll talk about that for the next five years, maybe 10 years, maybe forever. Okay. So that's a really good value. But let's say you don't want to go out, do all that, or you just haven't got the organization to provide all that. Maybe it's just something that sticks around the house with your name, your logo. This is a lifetime guarantee knife, Cutco. Um, you know, I promote that now because I think it's a good example of something that sticks around, right? Something that has a lifetime warranty, right? The whole idea is to do a lifetime. I, I also like, you know, tr plant uh, uh, trees, right? So you take a Japanese maple that costs two, three hundred dollars, right? You come to the property, you hand them this Japanese maple. Nobody doesn't like Japanese maples. They're great. Um, they're beautiful. Um, if that Japanese maple sticks around and lives. <laughs> they'll have it for life on that house. And every time they see that maple, they'll think of you, right? As the realtor, you need to have gifts that stick around. The stuff like baskets that are edible and all this sort of stuff, that's great. They're gonna be happy for a week, but they won't remember that in 10 years. They won't remember that in five. When they go to sell again, if you haven't stayed in contact or reminded them, they're not. They're gonna use somebody else or at least think about using somebody else that's more relevant. They met last week and they happen to be a neighbor that knows the area. You know, and you were, didn't stay in touch, you're losing that client, right? So, just gifts that stick around that have lifetime appeal is really good. And that should be part of the team process, every team member, right? If I was selling still, I've, I've told this to a few agents take this idea if you like it. Um, I'd be the sharpest man in real estate and everything, everybody gets a knife, right? Even if I lose a listing presentation, here's the knife, right? Um, sorry, I say lose, I wouldn't lose the listing presentation. <laughs> <laughs> but even if I think that I don't have a shot at it, or I think that, you know, you know, I've gone in, I'm like, ah, you know, maybe I got it. Maybe I didn't. I still send the knife regardless of whether or not I get it. Here's thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. I'm the sharpest guy in real estate. Or it's like, just brand yourself. Um, CRM system. 
you have to have, this has to be set up everyone. And, you know, we, we, we partnered with um, a remarketer over the last two years, uh, really honed it down to the things that we really wanted to make sure uh, were, were on this program, things that we can do and teach and get you using. It's the 85% rule, right? 85% of your people are repeat referral business. So we need to make sure that every agent is equipped and armed with a great CRM. Okay. Um, just doing things like setting them up with their newsletter, emailed or not. Uh, email newsletter, occasional greetings. By the way, I for the, the suggestion to take Mother's Day and Father's Day off. Um, I got that on Monday at our coaching. We did take Mother's Day. Well, I've asked them to, and they said they would take Mother's Day and Father's Day off. So we we're just going to tweak it again. It's the great program because I'm able to do stuff like that. Um, some of the other big programs out there, I've used Top Producer. Um, I've used Exact Contact. Um, you know, all the other systems are out there. I find a lot of them are too over the top, right? You know, um, that have accounting and transactional and lead gen and all this sort of stuff. Now, this system does have that, you know, and it has a simplified version from what I think and an easier version to use. But you look at those top producers, like you need a university degree to figure those things out. And people are talking like Salesforce. Oh my God, I use Salesforce, by the way. And uh, that was intense. Right. So these aren't the CRMs that you need. You need something that's simple that just reminds people, you know, uh, your 12 times, 24 time touches, your your paper newsletter. You need to build out um, a, an, a marketing system for sphere of influence that is amazing for your team. And everyone uses it. Every single team member that ever joined my team all got papered news newsletters, paper, meaning somebody actually, you know, put it in the mail and received it and all the rest of it. And I've been sending a paper newsletter for seven, 17 years now almost. Um, so it is my number one that I, I think that was an automated system that I got calls from. So having a good CRM and setting these things up and, and having an organized list so you can put all your A's, B's, C's, and D's, you can pull off your A's, go do pop buys, hand out gifts, all that stuff needs to happen on your team. And it needs to be the number one thing that your team does. Okay. Because you can lead them in, learn, like get lure them in um, with promises of lead generation and leads, and you do need to give them those. They're not making the money for the team. They're not making the money for themselves through lead gen. What they're doing is they're honing their skills. Uh, they're getting better and conf more confident with those people. And every now and then they'll do a one or two extra deals a year because of the lead gen system. That's fine. That's not what's going to make them and your team successful. It's the buyer journey, the seller journey, and it's the sphere of influence, the return repeat business. That is bar none where your business is going to be the strongest. Um, it does have tasks um, in there. Uh, the system has the uh, power to, to do tasks. I would suggest as a team, you set up a task system. You can save tasks and, 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 and reminders um, as a kind of like a, a, um, a drip campaign, if you would. Um, it's a little different the way this drip campaign works because it really does focus on going in um, as a, either an administrator or yourself once a day, going in and that sends you emails, of course, to remind you to do certain things, right? So you can set it up for um, six months, one year, two years, four years, five years, all the rest of it. This is an example of what I would do. I'd set up a task for a one year home anniversary follow-up, right? So send a card on that date, hit save. Now, Jimmy is gonna, there's gonna be a notification to prompt me to go ahead and send a one year anniversary. You have an administrator. This is the stuff an administrator should be doing with you. And then, of course, there's the happy birthday to your house. So you do a happy birthday to your house every year of the anniversary they moved in. Right. Guess what? They're going to remind every year in the fifth year. That's when the mortgage is, uh, comes up. Right. So guess what? They're going to think about, well, should we redo this mortgage or should we sell? Should we move up? You know, and there's the happy birthday to your house that went out. Um, this is one I, I used to do. So uh, the you, you know newsletters, emails, your quarterly calls, your home anniversary, your pop buys, your note cards, your calendars. These are all things that you can put on a reminder task system within the CRM. Okay, if you get busy enough, you will not be able to keep up with this. Okay, so bottom line, take my road to Grand Centurion or my team building or my, I've got different programs that, and number one thing is to hire an administrator. Okay. So as soon as you get to a certain business level, yes, you will need an administrator to do all this for you. Okay. Cause you will not be able to keep up with it.
I know from experience, I know that that is the number one thing to take somebody from a 200, 300,000 all the way up to 800,000. Okay. And uh, I have some testimonials of people. We did that this year too, right? I got them assistance and they're just killing it. They're doing amazing to the point where they're you know, like thinking about getting two assistants, right? Because it's really scaled up their business. Um, so to be organized um, as a team, you are going to need checklists, right? So your team members fill these in. Uh, we did a listing checklist back when we did the, uh, the seller journey. And here is a buyer checklist. Uh, it is in an Excel format. I am going to show you where to find this. And you can change it up to be whatever you want it to be. Okay. So this is an example of one. This is actually Richard Robbins' um, Team Summit buyer checklist. And this, um, I'll just go through some of the things here. So, you know, it, it is administrative, right? So this is what needs to happen. You've got to create a closing file number, status pending to showing, do a trade record, prepare two copies of the waivers, Dropbox lawyers, birthday reminder to your, to your CRM, uh, complete the sold conditional checklist, uh, offer summary documents. Like these are things that are in a typical Richard Robbins, right? Uh, he wrote all this out. Um, buyer closing, now it's firmed up, right? So record number of buyer visits. I don't know why he wants to do that, but that's what he has on his. Um, change the contact uh, types, uh, assign anniversary plan, do a CMA for the anniversary letter. That's an amazing idea. Um, these are things that, uh, you know, that he's suggesting as part of the, his buyer's journey, right? Yours is going to look different, right? Mine would look totally different than us, but it gives you some ideas, right? Some of the things that uh, they, you know, they do. And then after closing, so very similar to my actually listing presentation, um, I did the pre-listing, first day listing, every day after the listing, and then after the listing sells. So after closing, schedule date to send um, and this, he, he did Morris, Morris Marketing Newsletter, right? Morris does a newsletter. Um, uh, we've tried to do the Morris Marketing Newsletter in the past, see if it's any good. I'm telling you, it, it's actually, it's a good newsletter. It's fine. Morris Marketing is a great marketing company. But I will tell you with Morris, there's less automation, right? You actually have to have it delivered, then you deliver it, and then all this sort of stuff. It's kind of a, it's a tough system to get going. Just another example of a newsletter system now. Um, anyway, so there, there's the, you know, the different idea in terms of uh, the typical um, uh, buyer checklist that you would put on the front of the file, either have your assistant do or your buyer agent do. And again, thank you to Richard Robbins for providing some ideas and, and, I'm going to show you more with Richard Robbins. So, so just to recap, you know, we would you, we just went through the buying presentation, showing properties, property information package to present offers, the negotiation, what happens when you firm up the deal, what happens um, pre-closing checkup, right, with the move snap, and call them questions and answers. I didn't mention that, right? So call them, you know, set that up as a task reminder to maybe a month before closing, something like that, where you know you have a question and answer, right? So. Do you have any questions about how the closing is going to go? They will. Well, we've done this and we've done that. Uh, how does this work? Um, closing day, client care. So just a recap of all the things you think about when you put together what a buyer goes through when they're purchasing a property with you and your system. Thank you so much for watching. If you like our video, please hit the like button, the subscribe, and even the little bell to get notifications just so you can stay in touch and watch more of these great videos.